Hi everyone and welcome back to SCI Coffee Break and hopefully you have followed this series and you'll know that we're speaking with Sam Gross from ChoiceWorks. Hi Sam. Hello David, how are you today? Very good and do you know it's been, it's been good to listen to your thoughts on all this uh, in, in, the last, um, in the last series of, of vlogs. Some very interesting um, conceptual ideas as well as how that translates potentially into service and value as well. So in this one, right, I'd like to concentrate on maybe what you've been doing in relation to all that stuff you've talked about, the research, your history, to what's brought you right to you right now? Why, why, what are you doing with choice works? Um, and, and how is that addressing some of the challenges you've talked about? Yeah, so let's maybe talk about what you're doing. How have you taken all that information and sort of modeled it into Optinium, which is, I think, one of your key uh, one of your key sort of um, services products. What's different about that? How does the technology work? And maybe consider the, the remediation aspect of, of Actinium and the reasoning engine in there, because I'm really interested in how all that really works. When you talk about your know, context uh, in the last session, how that really works then from, a, from an AI perspective. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's really a great question. So, you know, I spent a little bit of time sharing um, if you will, philosophically, um, what the research uh, really uh, illustrated to us. So, so what does it do? Like, how does it work? Why does it work that way? So I'm going to start off with a really simple question. I think that we would agree that if you look across the industry, there's a lot of really great tools out there that's being used in endpoint. High quality, high performance endpoint management tools that are in the marketplace. Now, here's the question. If we have all of these great tools, why is the phone at the service desk still ringing? Why? We have all these tools. We'll all, we're all willing to put their hand on heart. This is the best tool. The core problem is not solved. And it's not because the people who built these products are not smart, as smart, smarter, differently smart. Pick any word you want. Uh, I argue that they are prisoners of the paradigms of our industry. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to pick those apart and then I'm going to tell you how we work. So the first thing is these types of tools are being bought by IT for IT. And so when you go to sell to the VP of end users infrastructure support, I own desktop management, I own service desk, I own desk side, whatever you own, all that kind of wonderful stuff. That really usually means you drew the short straw, but still you own it. <laughs> You are the buyer, and you have been looking at tools for many, many years. And when you look at that tool and when you see that dashboard, when you get that demo, when you ask those questions, do you do this? Can you do this? Can you do that? Do you integrate with this? Do you integrate with that? You're actually testing it in context of the paradigm of the past, mm -hmm. not the future. Mm -hmm. Do you integrate with the tools that I already made a decision to buy a long time ago? Mm. Now, uh, I'm a little bit of an arsonist in the industry, and I'll apologize in advance, but I believe that if we really look at the kind of like the current period of time or the era that we're just coming out of, maybe we're coming out of it, maybe we're still stuck in it. Most service architectures have your ITSM tool at the center or core of their support architecture. And there's some CMDB, which is half loaded and half inaccurate. I don't know which half is which, and neither do the customers or the users. Um, and so all new thoughts are being challenged in context of the old thought. Not the other way around. Not the other way around. Um, 
And I will tell you that in our journey since we've launched our Aptinuum product and working with the customers that have adopted it, uh, even we have learned that there were paradigms in the industry that we were mm, sympathetic to <clears throat> that we should not have been sim sympathetic to. So, <clears throat> so let me put that aside and let me go back to the core shortcoming in most of the technologies that we're using in the marketplace today. The core shortcoming is that there is a particular capability that that particular tool has, whether it's multicasting in the case of one very popular tool, whether it's uh, ultra fast agent and unstructured data um, uh, mechanisms in another, whether it is, <clears throat> um, I'll call it client side agent capability, rich client side capabilities, whether it is the ability to chat and be able to interpret uh, intent from a set of utterances. There's a whole host of capabilities. And as a development shop, once we kind of refine one of those mechanisms, we build a bunch of product around that to solve a problem. Uh, Aptinuum does not uh, subscribe to that notion at all. The problem with uh, the problem with our current uh, collection of technologies and the reason why the phones are still ringing is that those machine those technologies are primarily single vector technologies. They solve, they have a way of solving a problem and they solve all problems using the way that their technology works. That means that they are either relegating all the functionality to something that occurs at the agent at the endpoint. And so when you do that, there's a whole bunch of problems in terms of size, resource consumption, currency, um, and you can't really do things at the endpoint necessarily in context of a larger population of endpoints. You don't have the data available to you. You are isolated at an endpoint. There's another uh, kind of class of technologies that operate um, in some type of a large uh, data pool and are able to make decisions in terms of a large context of a large population of data, uh, data patterning, uh, other types of analytic processes. However, they suffer because the data that they're operating on is not really current, it's not really fresh. There is some lag between as things occur at the endpoint and the data that sits in that centralized data pool. And then there are other technologies that operate, if you will, at an AI level, such as chatbots using AI ML. And those technologies generally lack uh, or don't have access to the richness of the data that exists either at the endpoint or in that data pool. And those technologies are responding primarily to ticket data or other type of human language NLP types of inputs. Mm -hmm. So in all cases, it's kind of like a Solomon's baby decision that you make. You're choosing technology A, technology B, technology C, because you believe that either operating entirely at the endpoint, operating at some sort of a aggregated data pool, or, or operating at an AI level is the answer. And here's the bad news. That ain't going to work. And we've proven it. In fact, what we've built and what we've done is we've actually built a multi-vector approach. We've built an approach that allows us to operate autonomously and instantaneously at the endpoint. We've created a platform that allows us to operate proactively using a, 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 a data pool, a large aggregation of data patterns and anomalies to operate proactively at a data layer and a conversational uh, capability that allows an end user to interact directly with the AI engine for things that otherwise weren't represented by what, by what we refer to as the digital exhaust mm -hmm. 
of our operating environment. And so the brain and the human don't have the benefit, don't generate that digital exhaust. Machines do. So we operate both on a machine to machine basis as well as a human to machine basis. And by operating in both of those mo modalities and by operating in a multi-vector mechanism that allows us to understand what's happening instantaneously at the endpoint, what's happened historically at a persistent data pool, and what is it that an, a, a human is attempting to do at a conversational level actually has created what we believe is the holy grail of technology. And so, again, we're very proud of what we built. We have, um, we have results and statistics which are, we think, mind-boggling. In fact, <laughs> Uh, we were actually amazed. I remember our first uh, customer trial. Uh, we went off very sheepishly into a lab, hoping that we would see the same uh, kind of performance uh, metrics that we saw in our own labs. And uh, we went there, and yes, we saw it, and we were, oh, we're relieved, right? I mean, you're a startup, right? You're mm -hmm. doing something people haven't done before. But we were even more amazed when our first client uh, released our technology into the wild, meaning a much larger number of endpoints, a much wider diverser, diversity of data, and our right fix first time metrics actually went up by almost 20%. Mm. We were flabbergasted. Mm. And so it was a phenomenal uh, validation of the work that we've been doing for so many years. Uh, you know, the, the, uh, the sweat, the blood and the sweat, and the days and the nights and the weekends and the risks. Yeah. Um, but we believe that our multi-vector approach, uh, we believe that using, uh, departing this traditional approach around depending on support vector machines for kind of like traditional machine learning and moving into the realm of machine reasoning and decision-making, these decisions have come together. And today we have really hard proof that we've done something significantly different. And simply by virtue of the fact that we operate in a multi-vector approach instead of a single vector approach gives us an advantage. And to me, that's the ultimate validation. Mm, that's really cool. I mean, it's a lot there to just to get your head around, right? I really like the fact that this is a very scientific approach because I think sometimes, you, you know, when you look at what we do, the proof, and you mentioned earlier, the, the proof of, of, of the value of a tool set um, is, is really more about how well marketed it is rather than what it actually what it actually what it actually does. And the narrative is almost stolen by that to some degree. And then again, you've got these this packaged, sort of homogenized, great looking things, but they, it ain't what you thought it was going to be. So I do like the, the, that sort of data science, the data science behind this. It's very interesting, actually. And I like the way that that's um, you know, that the proof is there. That's, that's really, really interesting. Okay, that was a long one, right? That was a long one. Even, even my sort of brain is, is sort of <laughs> spun on its axis, right? So we're going to close on that one and we're going to finish on um, the next session, I think, where maybe we'll, we'll touch upon what it really means for an organization. So as you bring in this type of technology, how do I, how do I adapt? How does my team adapt? How, what, does, what does that look like? What does the new team look like? So thank you, Sam. It's been really, really interesting again to listen. Thank you to our listeners for listening as well. And we'll see you in the next session. Thank you.